Jeremiah 50, verse 4 to 7, for atheists. <laughs> the reason why I call this for atheists is because in Romans chapter 2, it says that God approves of some people who are behaving purely by conscience. And God, the invisible friend, is troubled by people who are carrying all the God information and they're actually not following it. So, Jeremiah 50, verses 4 to 7. You can look it up on whatever equipment you have. It's very interesting. The first part is talking about a time. The first part is talking about a time when many will come seeking understanding and better guidance. Okay, many will come seeking the strongest spirit or um, a good family atmosphere. The concept of Zion is actually just a place where things are chill and peaceable and, and wholesome and decent. Okay, many will come seeking. And the ones that are going to come seeking are the ones that actually love truth or who are wrestling with the highest truth. Okay? So that's why I respect the atheist. Romans chapter 2 basically says on the final day there are going to be people that God approves of who have been operating more purely by conscience. Now, if you can discover that there is an actual spirit being and there's a best spirit guide and you just avoid using that spirit guide, well, maybe you're going to have some problems. Because one thing that you know is that this life is going to end. This body is going to die and get put in the ground or burn up, turn into a crispy critter. So you know that death is coming. What is really going on in the afterlife? And is there anyone who's gone into the afterlife and come back out? That's your research problem. That's what you got to check into. I'm actually checking into some really interesting commentary right here. Okay, so the second part, verse 6 and 7. First of all, remember Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9 says, Okay, there's all these people in the land, but the ones who are supposed to be leading the people, the ones who are respected, they are going to be judged, condemned, killed, and destroyed first if they have been misbehaving. The leadership who has been misbehaving is going to be destroyed first and all the people are going to watch it. Your leaders, your teachers, your politicians, the people that you honor and respect, if they are misleading they are going to be destroyed first on the final day. Now, you might not believe in that stuff. You might believe in multiple resurrections and, and you come back as a bunny rabbit or a Toyota taillight lens or something like that. But it is written in the writings that hold the predictions about Jesus of Nazareth. I mean, here's the Bible problem. The Bible problem is this. It seems that there are 200 to 300 predictions set in the Hebrew writings that all come true in one person. So I like to call the written scriptures the writings that hold the predictions. There's three parts to the Bible. Predictions and preparations, the life and teachings, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And from Acts to Revelation is the first peoples to receive the supernatural powers of Jesus. They're going out and healing people. They're driving spirits off. They're changing the weather. They have supernatural powers. They threw John into a vat of oil to kill him like a French fry, to cook him like a French fry. He was unharmed by a vat of boiling oil. And there are many, many other stories of Christian disciples who are prevented from pain. They're talking kindly to their executioners as they're being killed and their legs are being cut off. Hey, we love you. We hope your family discovers the peace and the God that we've discovered. You know, we forgive you for what you're doing. We, we know you're only following orders. 
you know, as their legs are being cut off, they're not even crying out in pain. Same stuff with the people that were burned at the stake over the years. They were able to speak in the midst of being consumed. There's, there's like a wild supernatural power that comes over the disciples of Yeshua. So you might as well be one. You know what I'm saying? So in part two, remember Ezekiel 9, your leaders are going to be judged and potentially killed first for misleading. Here's the deal. Verse 6 and 7. The sheep, the people, the disciples, those who proclaim to be connected with God, they have left the safety. They've left what is safe. The reason why I'm always talking about the family honesty group. Even if you don't believe in Jesus, if you have family honesty times and you open up with your kids about everything that's real, you're doing a wise thing. The Havura, which means the brotherhood group, the communion group, and the brotherhood group, this is what I teach constantly. Church is not a big box meeting. I was ripped off by 63 years of American church, and now I'm starting a brand new little family tree where we actually follow the stuff that's available on the web and act just like the earliest disciples and just live our lives. We still got to live a stupid life, you know? Okay, so here's the deal. The sheep, the people, the disciples have left the safety of the family honesty group. They have left the Havira. They have left the brotherhood group. They're out in danger. They're unguided. They have left Adonai, the sweet boss, the Lord. And the Lord, in the human sense, is your daddy, your grandpa, your best teacher, your spiritual guide. And it is also directly the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, and God. But God manifests in human beings. Who was Elijah? Who was John the Baptist? Who was the prophet Zechariah? Everybody hated those people and they killed them. Those people are Adonai the sweet boss in human form. Okay, so the sheep have left the safety. This is a little drawing of the flock, the fold. That's like supposed to be a little sheep fold. And this is a beautiful little river that they can drink from right next to it. They've left the fold and they've gone into the hills and the mountains where it's dangerous for sheep, where sheep can get picked off, jumped on, and die. Sheep are very easy it's very easy to jump on a sheep and cut its throat and have it for dinner. It's not hard to catch a sheep. And when you're in the mountainous territory, it becomes even easier. You coax the sheep up and you jump on it. Okay, the sheep are a lot easier to kill than a deer or something like that. And that's why you need shepherds to keep the wild animals away. So the sheep, the disciple, the people, have left the home communion group where people admit their faults that is shepherded by a little local person who could be the plumber who listens to everybody's problems and talks personally with the peoples. A shepherd is not a big business guy, fancy teacher. You shouldn't call those people pastors. That's wrong. That's a wrong definition. A pastor is a person who is hearing the troubles of the people and sharing at the communion time. If you're not doing communion times in your home behind closed doors with people that are willing to die for Jesus today, you're in a fakery. So the people, the sheep have left the fold. They're in the mountains. And what's going on? The bad shepherds, the devourers, the enemies are actually killing the sheep. They're taking them and they're using them for food. And they're abusing them and destroying them. But when the trouble happens, these bad shepherds and devourers or enemies are saying, it's not our fault. Those sheep have left the safety of the fold and the safety of Adonai 
What is the fold? The fold is the family honesty group. The fold is the Havira. The fold is the communion group. The fold is the brotherhood group that are totally open to one another. 1 Corinthians 11.28 Examining themselves and sharing their problems, even talking about the bad spirits that still afflict them. In this season of their life, they might be free from many afflictions, but there may be a few areas where their buttons are still pushed. They still have problems. I mean, one of my closest family members has a really big problem with fear and with anger. Becoming furious at angry people is not an answer. And becoming fearful and following stupid solutions for fears is terrible. The option is to turn to the invisible guide. So anyhow, hello, greetings. This is Jeremiah 50, verses 4 to 7, for atheists. Yay! Say hi to the little critters. Keep everything cheerful and family style and kid 